Good morning, good morning. I want to say happy Resurrection Day. The, the grave is empty and Jesus is alive. He's alive even today. We're going to have the Lord's Supper this morning as well because I feel it's very appropriate for the time. We should do that every Sunday. Every time we get together, we should take the Lord's Supper as a family. Never forget that. But I want to do it as part of our sermon also this morning. Speaking about his death, Jesus who died for us in a Sunday, it's resurrection morning. He has risen. He is risen. So when he died, there was three dimensions that got the message. Three dimensions got the message. The first was the heavens. When the heavens got the message of Christ's death, the sun refused to shine for three hours. For three hours there was total darkness over the earth. The second place that got the message when Christ died was the earth. And there was a, a tremendous, a violent uh, earthquake that took place in the earth at that time when Jesus died. A violent earthquake that took place. And the third place, that uh, the dimension where, where all the souls are kept, that dimension opened its doors. And we saw then that in Jerusalem there were people that already died that was walking around in Jerusalem. So there was a mighty shaking. The heavens, the earth, and everything under the earth heard the message that Jesus Christ gave His life. What an awesome, awesome experience that was for us on our behalf. And then God reacted. And how did He react? He reacted by taking the, the, the veil that was between the holies and the holy of holies where nobody could go in. And He tore the veil from top to bottom so that you and I have the right to go into that presence of God, to be there where God is so that we can, we can, we can have intimacy with Him and have, have this amazing relationship. You and I have total open doors to God our Father. This is what happened on Friday. This is that happened on the Friday at the crucifixion. And then there was suddenly, after all the shaking, after all this violent uh, thunder that happened and the, and the fact that the sun didn't shine, there was silence. Total silence. The whole of Friday, there was silence. The whole of Saturday, the whole of, of the universe was waiting and there was silence. Not a word was said. There was nothing responded. They were all waiting for the Son of God to respond. They were waiting in anticipation for Jesus to respond. And then was Sunday. And suddenly the silence was broken. When the silence was broken, the stone was rolled away and Jesus was, was there. He appeared. Jesus appeared. And suddenly all heavens declare... The glory of the risen Lord. The heavens declared the glory of the risen Lord. So Jesus rose and when he rose from the dead, his body didn't carry any sin or sickness anymore. There was no sign of sin, no sign of sickness on him on that day when he rose from the dead. And the amazing thing is on the cross... Where he took our sins, He took our sicknesses, He took our curses, He took all that thing that we were liable for, He took it upon Himself. And He became sin on the cross. But when He arose from the dead, there was no sign of the sin that He took on Himself. Why? Because He paid the full price for it. It's already been paid. All your sin has been paid for. From the beginning you were born until the day you would die. From all those things, you have been acquitted. God has forgiven you. He's already said you are innocent. He's declared you innocent by, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And how awesome is that? But where is our sins? It's gone. It's clean. It's, it's a clean sweep. To faith it's gone. But to experience, it's not always gone. Experience, it's not always gone. But in God's reality and in God's perspective... It, has, he's, it is clear that He has cleared us from sin. And He has declared us innocent. He's cleared us from sickness. From His perspective, 
He has already paid for your sickness. And I want to say to you, if you are challenged with, with something in your body that's not right, I want to say now in the name of Jesus, the price on the cross has already been paid. It's over. It's done. It's finished. The game is over. It is finished. You are now healed from God's perspective. Now receive that right where you are in Jesus' name. I speak life over you. Maybe you are there and you have, you have some serious sickness in your body. I declare healing over you now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for your precious healing that flows through us because of the cross. Hallelujah. So Jesus rose for our forgiveness. He, when He rose from the dead, he, he did it for our salvation, for our wholeness, so that we do not have to be sick, and to declare us righteous. This is very important to understand. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead declared us righteous. So the gospel of grace and peace produces health and prosperity, and it brings so that, so that you can become a blessing to many. That's why this gospel of peace and grace produces these things so that we can be a blessing. God wants us to be well supplied in our calling and in our walk with Him. So why did God, why did God raise Jesus from the dead? One of the reasons that, that we know is to conquer death. Why? Because death is God's enemy. It's an enemy that had to be conquered and Jesus paid the price and He conquered death by coming up and taking His life back. So God's love plan for us has never been for us to be sick or, or to grow old and, and die. It wasn't His plan. It, his plan was for us to live forever, to stay young forever, to be whole forever, to never walk around with sickness, never be in poverty. That's God's love plan for us. But because of sin, <clears throat> death came. And God hates sin. So, sin is, the death is also the final vindication. You know, there's... There's no political correctness after somebody dies. There's no more arguments if a person dies. Do you know that? So all that stuff goes away when, when a person dies. Why? Because God hates death. And, and, and death is a clear cut and it brings absolute vindication of God's truth. And the truth is God wants us to live. You know, we hate cancer. We hate sickness that, that, that attacks people. We hate it. But we just as much as we love the person who's got the sickness. So, why does God hate sin? Because He loves you. It's like us hating cancer or sickness that's, that's breaking people down. Because you love that person. In that same way, God hates sin, but He loves you. Because He loves you. And if you want to admit that you're a sinner, and we all are, we're all worse sinners. I mean, listen... When you, when you follow the law, you, you become so aware of the fact that you do need a Redeemer. You need somebody to help you. Because you can't save yourself. And the moment you say, Lord Jesus, I need your help. That very, very moment, God will come and He will save you. I remember, I spoke to, to people all about this. But in my days, when I, when I came to the Lord, I was intoxicated with wine one evening. And in, in my... In my intoxication, I cried out to God and I said, if there's a God out there, help me. My spirit cried out to God because I was living a lie. I, I was living a lie about myself, believing stuff about myself that wasn't true. I was a son of God from the beginning and I just didn't know it. So are you. You are a son of God. And, and that's, what, that's, that's the truth about, about you that God believes. What do you believe about yourself? You see, the moment you believe what God believes, your whole life changes. Hallelujah. Your whole life changes. So in Romans 4, 24 and 25, it says, But also over us. For when we believe and embrace the one who brought our Lord Jesus back to life, perfect righteousness will be credited to our account as well. So what, what, do, we have, what do we have to do? <laughs> We, we always want to do stuff. What, what must happen for us to, to, be, to be acquitted by God, to be, be in perfect righteousness with God? What must happen? I must believe that Jesus Christ died for me and that He rose. And when He rose, God made you righteous. You've got to believe what He already knows about you. 
You've got to believe what He's already done for you. You've got to believe that you can do nothing to save you, but He is the one who saves us. You just got to believe it. And the moment you believe it, you will see that He will bring life to you and life in abundance. And then it says, and He handed over because of humanity's fallen condition. He was, he was handed over to the cross because of our condition. Not His condition, our condition. Our condition nailed Him to the cross. Our fallen mindset nailed Him to the cross. Our lies that we believe about ourselves nailed Him to the cross. And He was raised because we were declared righteous. Why was He raised? Because God, in His eyes, He sees you as righteous. His resurrection is the official receipt of your acquittal. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead, and this is resurrection morning, the fact that He's risen from the dead is your acquittal, is the receipt of your acquittal. You are free. I'm declaring it over you this morning. What He has done for us has set us free. This is one of the most important statements in the entire Bible. The most important statement in the entire Bible. By raising Jesus from the dead, God is proclaiming His belief in our redeemed innocence. He's, he's proclaiming His belief in our re redeemed innocence. The resurrection is the ultimate proof and the trophy of our righteousness in God's faith. In God's faith. Why? Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of Christ. So if when we hear the word of Christ like you are hearing now, you will feel faith. Faith stir up in your spirit. And as you feel the faith stir up in your spirit, I want you to know that's not your faith, it's His faith. And that faith will believe it. When that faith believes through you, because of the word that you hear, it's going to change your life forever. It's going to connect you to eternity. Hallelujah. It's going to give you a life forever. This is what God's words promise us. So the cross carried our sins. His resurrection declared our innocence. His death brought closure to the fallen condition or the fallen mindset uh, of, 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 his, of His creation. The fallen mindset that was in man. And, and not only that, it's the resurrection is a proof that God has, knows our redeemed innocence. He's declared us redeemed and innocent. So why was Jesus handed over to die? Because of your and my transgressions. Because of your and my transgressions. And every other person on this planet. So why was he raised from the dead? Because of your righteousness and innocence. <laughs> because God declared you righteous and innocent. That's why Jesus was raised from the dead. To declare you righteous and innocent in the eyes of the Lord. So His resurrection reveals your righteousness. If mankind was still guilty after he, Jesus died, His resurrection would be irrelevant. If mankind was guilty after Jesus went to the cross, His resurrection would be irrelevant. In Acts chapter 17 and 31, Paul explains to the Greek philosophers that according to the Jewish prophetic word, God had fixed a day on which He would judge the world in righteousness. I want you to know this. God is judging the world in righteousness by a man whom we had been appointed. And that man is Christ. Jesus. God says. <clears throat> Jesus says of God. He says. God does not judge people. But he has put judgment in the hands of his son. So when Jesus went to the cross. He judged our sins. He judged our transgressions, he judged the sickness, he judged death, and he made a null of it. He he stopped all of that. So, <clears throat> and by this man that he appointed, and and of he, of this he has proof, given proof to all mankind by raising him from the dead. So God proved that he's taken all our sins away by raising him from the dead. So God's declaration of your redeemed innocence. Is his most urgent invitation to humanity to encounter intimate oneness with him. So you see, by, by dying on the cross for us and rising him up from the dead, 
God is actually declaring you innocent. He's, he's declaring, declaring you redeemed and innocent. And that is the invitation to mankind, to humanity, to come into intimacy, to come into oneness with Him, because the Father and the Son are one. And as He is in us, we are in Him and He is in us. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 17, For as He is, so are we in this world. So God wants you to know that you are special. He wants you to know that you are loved, that you are redeemed, that He's already found you innocent. You just got to believe it. That's all. You have to believe it. And it's, it's by hearing this word, the words of Christ, that, you, that, that His faith is stirred in your spirit. And it will bring you to a position where you can believe. So God did not raise Jesus because He was the Son of God. He raised Jesus because He declared you and me righteous. That's why He raised Jesus. Not because He's the Son of God. He raised Him on your behalf because He knew what you were. And He knew that you are, that that would seal your redeemed innocence. So Jesus <clears throat> would not have been raised uh, if we were seen righteous in God's eyes. Because Jesus was raised from the dead. We can now have certainty that we have been forgiven and declared righteousness because he he didn't he didn't he wasn't raised to uh, so that we could be seen right, righteous no he was raised so that that you could to declare that you already are righteous that you already are forgiven in God's eyes again i say if all mankind was still guilty after Jesus died the resurrection would be irrelevant that's why we need to understand what Jesus did for us on the cross. The, the Young's Literal Translation says this. He says in Romans, Who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised up because of our being declared righteous. He was raised up to, to because of our being declared righteous. So mankind's salvation has got nothing to do with personal achievement. It's got nothing to do with our reward or world-driven initiatives. You see, a lot of Christianity or a lot of religion would want you to get rewards. If I do that, if you, if you pray, you would do that. If you, if you fast, you will do that. If you, if you live a holy life, you will do that. You know, no, there's a lot of rules and regulations and we... We, we bring that into our equation so that we can do stuff to make us feel better and make, think we, make God feel better. No, there's nothing that we can do to make things better. It's not about willpower rewards or, or willpower driven initiatives. You cannot save yourself. The law and works can never replace grace. It is grace by the grace of God that we are where we are today because of him whatever glory was lost in adam is now again restored to us in christ jesus and our standing with god is righteous by his grace not by what we've done it's got nothing to do with you it's got everything to do what he's done it's unchanging it can never change his grace has already declared you righteous so declaring that we are righteous in God doesn't mean that we can keep on sinning. Doesn't mean that we can keep on sinning. Why? Because righteousness really produces holiness. So <clears throat> God used the greatest power to raise Jesus from the dead. And I want to say to you that same power that raised Jesus from the dead is now in you and in me. That same power to overcome sin, to overcome all those challenges that we are challenged with. That same power is in you. The power to raise Christ from the dead now dwells in you bodily. Right now, in this moment. So everything that, that dwelled in Adam's nature has been removed by the cross. Jesus delivered us from all those things. From diseases. And everyone that, that, that has got challenge on, the, on that level, I want to declare over you righteous healing right now in Jesus' name. I declare it over you, not because of, of my words, but because of what He's done for you on the cross. I decree it over your life. It is done. So when God raised Jesus from the dead, He also raised us from the dead. So when Jesus died, we died. 
When Jesus rose from the dead, so did we. When He ascended into the heavens, so did we. When He sat at the right hand of the Father, at, at the, in, in the place of executive authority, so did we. High above all the sickness, high above all the politics of the world, high above all the coronas, high above all those things. And from that position we are ruling. From that position, which is a kingdom position in Christ, where the King rules in us and through us, we are ruling over this earth. It is time for the sons of God to be revealed. The whole of the, the universe in Romans 8 is waiting in anticipation for the sons of God to be revealed. They are hungry to see you. To see you in the manner the, that God sees you. To see you know and believe what God believes about you. That's what the universe is waiting for. <clears throat> Every time you hear of an earthquake, it is, it's like the... Like, like, like creation is coming and revolting against the fact that we do not know that we are sons. Revolting because we did not believe the message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ which declared us righteous and innocent in God's eyes. <laughs> we are sons. We are sons of the Most High God. All our sickness, all the curses that was on us, our weaknesses, our sins, Everything is left at the cross. Everything. So Jesus went to, to the cross for you and for me to pay for our sins. So Peter, who was a man of action, he said Jesus did no sin. And Paul, who was a man of knowledge, says Jesus knew no sin. <laughs> John who was a man of love, the apostle of love. He said there is no, no sin in him. Jesus was not raised so that we could become uh, the righteous. He was raised from the dead because we were declared righteous. Because of the cross. Not to become righteous, but to declare that you already are righteous. Hallelujah. That's why. So how do you know that, that you've been acquitted of all your sins? How would you know? How do I know that God has really forgiven me? <clears throat> How do we know that God has forgiven us? Let me tell you. When the one who serves your sentence comes out of the prison. What happened to him? He came out of the prison. He was raised from the dead. When the one who carried your sentence on the cross is released from the prison. <clears throat> Jesus rising from the dead is the declaration that you are acquitted. The fact that he rose from the dead says you are acquitted. You are free. We should have this attitude of, of uh, that we are dead to sin. This is how we should be. We should be dead to sin. You are, <clears throat> you are someone that cannot change. With, uh, that cannot be charged with sin. Why? Because you're a believer. Because you believe that Jesus already has paid the price for you. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 17. And if Jesus is still dead, your faith has no relevance and you are still in sin. This is Paul. Paul is saying, he's got the understanding that, that at the cross, Jesus was the document of humanity's guilt. So humanity's guilt was nailed to the cross. It was the document with all our sins and all our stuff that disqualified us, all our unbelief that disqualified us from His kingdom. And He saw Christ Jesus as that document of humanity's guilt. And He saw the resurrection as the receipt of our acquittal. So the resurrection of Jesus is the receipt of your acquittal. The same humanity who died in a man was raised again in a man. The same humanity that died in Adam was now raised in Jesus. In Adam all died. Now in Jesus that same all has been made alive. The same all has been made alive. Jesus was raised to declare that you are righteous. I want you to believe that this morning. The resurrection of Jesus is not, is not the payment. It's the receipt that proves that you are righteous. The fact, that's what we are celebrating today, the, 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 the resurrection of Christ Jesus. The proof of, we are celebrating the proof of your righteousness, your right standing, your innocence before the Father. We are standing here so the devil and the law cannot accuse you anymore. Why? Because you are forgiven. 
Your sins are forgiven. You are righteous. So in Romans 3 verse 24, Jesus Christ is the proof of God's grace gift. And He redeemed the glory of God in human life. Mankind condemned is now mankind justified. Listen to this. Mankind condemned is now mankind justified justified why because jesus was raised from the dead hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah he proved that god did not make a mistake when he when he made us in his image and his likeness and then verse 23 says and fell short because of adam <clears throat> the same all are equally declared innocent because of christ those and that's all of us that fell short because of adam now all of us equally are declared innocent that same all of us are equally declared innocent by Christ so the law reveals what happened in Adam but grace reveals what happened in Christ people God loves you he's done it for you believe what I'm saying this is the truth this is the gospel of Jesus Christ it's the gospel of the kingdom you are declared righteous this day in memory is the day that we are reminding ourselves of what he's done for us therefore we're going to take the bread <clears throat> and we're going to take this bread and we're going to eat it and as this bread touches my my the inner my inner body this bread becomes the body of christ and as he is broken and as we are reminding us of our righteousness because of the price that he paid we are reminded this morning of his body that was broken so that we didn't have to have sin and sickness and curses in our lives. God has blessed you. Thank you, Jesus. Just where you are, just take the bread. Just even afterwards, take bread and break it and take wine and drink it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your body that's been broken for us. We worship you, Lord. Thank you for the price that you paid on the cross. Thank you for raising, rising up out of the dead. Declaring us righteous. Declaring us innocent in the eyes of the Lord. <clears throat> now my grace, my God, I pray that you would open our eyes so that we can see exactly what you see and believe about us. What you believe about us is that we are sons. Sons of the Most High God. That's what you believe. Open our eyes to see. Thank you, Father. Also the blood. Thank you, Father, for the, for the cup of your blood. And we know by this, there's power in the blood. And the power in the blood is to redeem us from sins. <laughs> it will never, 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 never lose its power. Thank you for the power of the blood. To redeem us from sins. Even the sins that we would still commit. I pray God that you would open your, your scriptures to, uh, to people. So that people can see the Son. The Word which is a person called Christ. In Jesus name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Father. Thank you for this wonderful, wonderful day that we can worship you and thank you for what you've done for us. I pray for everyone hearing your word now, my God, that sickness will pass right now. Depression will leave right now in Jesus' name. As we speak at my Father, I thank you that you, you bring healing to people right now. Cancer in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave those bodies. You have been overcome in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you that we are righteous. Help us believe what you believe about us. Help us see what you see about us. We are sons of the Most High God, and we are righteous before our Father in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. All you have to do to be a part of this is just believe. Believe. Let the word that's in you, that raises the faith levels in you, just reach out and touch that belief 
and you will see your life change forever. God loves you. We're looking forward to speaking to you next week and uh, convey the message of Christ with you. God loves you and we love you. And now may we all be established in this present truth. In Jesus' name. Amen.